Apex Legends is by far one of the hardest FPS's on the market currently. You have to know so much and be able to adapt and change everything on the fly in order to set you and your team up for victory. With all that going on, you may have found yourself hitting a wall or plateau where you just can't seem to improve. Some people aren't sure where to look in their gameplay in order to push through that barrier and break through into a new rank or skill class. So today I'm going to give you some tips on how to improve in Apex. So stay a while and listen and let's hop into the tips god that was such a bad deckard kane impression starting off before we even make it into the game of apex we have to talk about tip number one and that's fixing your settings in the future i will be making a full settings guide built around every single aspect for both mouse and keyboard and controller players but for this one i want to talk about two very important things first up we have hit markers there are three options here none x and x with shield icon you always want to turn these off you do not and should not have hit markers on they cause unnecessary screen clutter and can cause you to lose sight on things in fights clearing up your screen allows you to see better and focus more on your target it might not seem like much at first and you really might not notice it when you have them on but as soon as you turn them off it'll be clear as day and the second thing is your damage numbers like the hit markers here are all the options you have none stacking floating and both can you take a guess at which one i'm going to recommend that's right stacking i have coached and given tips to hundreds of people who use floating or both and I have always told them to stop it. First off, let's talk about why floating is bad. Actually, it's not just bad, it's awful. Because you have to do math in a fight. I don't care who you are, when you're in the middle of a team fight trying to keep track of everything, you won't have time to add up all those numbers and relay them to your team. If you're running a gun with a high fire rate, you won't know exactly how much damage you're doing, and that will lead to worse callouts to your team and can end up losing a fight. And once again, it causes screen clutter. Apex has enough useless things blocking your screen you don't need to add more but now you may be asking if i don't want to add screen clutter then why don't i just turn off damage numbers and that's a fair question that i'll answer with another question if you turn off damage numbers how will you give callouts on how much damage you've done you need to have stacking numbers because it doesn't overly clutter your screen and it gives you information that you can then call out it adds the numbers for you you don't have to do math in a fight and i'm not even going to justify people using both i don't even want to talk about it. Don't do it. But what you should do is give the video a big ol' thumbs up if you're enjoying it so far. Also, if you want to continue to get these amazing educational videos, don't forget to tap that subscribe button and ring the bell. We post daily Apex videos and you won't want to miss them. Now going straight into tip number two, it's how to be a good jump master. Jump master is something a lot of people overlook because on the surface it seems pretty straightforward. But there are actually some simple tips that you'll want to start implementing into your jump skills. First up is learning distances. If you're going to jump somewhere, ping that location so that you can see how far it is. If the ship is going close enough, you'll want to jump at around 450 meters. That way you can just simply fly straight there and give you a good line to pick a building. If it's far away, something like 1200 meters, you'll want to do the dolphin dive technique. That's where you start to do the wave motion, dipping down and coming back up to level you out to get more distance out of your speed. And speaking of speed, for those 1200 flights, you'll want to keep it between 130 and 140. When it goes down below 130, you dive back down to gain the speed, then level out again to gain the distance. If you're going further, you can let the speed drop to 120 to get even more distance out of it. But this is some extreme cases where you're going to legitimately the opposite side of the map. Normally between 130 and 140 will get you just about everywhere you need to go. This takes time to learn, so hop into a few pub games and practice it a bit. You'll learn some of your own techniques and over time you'll be able to get anywhere on the map no matter where it is. And now that you're on the ground looting, we can talk about tip number three and that's inventory management. This is another hot topic when I coach players, their inventory is always a mess and it drives me up the wall. They'll be running a light shoddy combo and have sniper mags, heavy bullets and all other sorts of random things that they do not need. Now I understand that people will carry items in order to swap if they can find their desired gun, but if you're low on backpack space it isn't worth it most of the time. Let me break down my ideal backpack and show you what you want to carry. For this example I'll be running a flatline with a mastiff and have a blue backpack. So we have 14 spaces to work with. Starting with ammo, I will carry one stack of shotgun and three stacks of heavy. This gives me enough to fight with. Three stacks of heavy should be more than enough to finish a fight with, and if you use more than that, that's a problem for another video. Now we have 10 spaces to work with. Let's go to 
of heals. You'll want two stacks of batteries, two stacks of shield styles, and one stack of med kits with one stack of syringes. You will be getting your shields cracked way more often than you'll have your health hit. That's why you want to have more shield heals and not more health heals. Batteries are also the most luxurious item you'll have for healing and you'll always want to have them when you can and they are never worth dropping. So we have four spaces left and three of those go to nades. I prefer arc stars because sticking someone can turn a fight or win it before it even starts. Then I go to thermites for forcing people out of cover or blocking off spots for pushes. Then lastly I'll take frags. They do hit hard but they don't offer as much utility as the other grenades. And now we have one spot left and that's left up to you. What do you need in your backpack? Are you playing Watson? Then you'll want to have an ultimate accelerant there. Do you use a lot more ammo in fights? Then pick up another stack of heavy. Or are you like me and you absolutely love to have a lot of batteries? Then pick up another stack of batteries. This is all up to you and what character you're playing and it'll change every game. Now that you're done looting and actually fighting people, let's talk about tip number four and that's overvaluing kills. Now I get it, killing people is fun and if you drop someone to one shot you really want to run them down and finish the kill. But a lot of the time you'll actually end up throwing yourself out of position and be caught out easily. Even on characters like Wraith or Octane you can still be caught out and throw fights for your teams. One of my favorite things to do against highly aggressive Octanes is to run away so that they chase. Eventually you'll be far enough away from their team and you can take a easy 1v1 and kill them before they even have a chance to catch up. This is really highlighted and ranked, you don't want to chase down kills. They will Will come with proper positioning and knowledge of where circles pull. If you're not sure how to read zones, we have a video covering that on the channel, you should really go check it out. This is going to be the hardest habit to break because you really have to put it in your head not to chase unless you know a thousand percent that you can kill them with no issues. But especially in ranked, you'll gain more from it over time. Now moving on to tip number five, it's warm up before you play ranked. Now I get it, some people have very limited time and don't want to waste any of it on the firing range. But I'm not talking about spending hours on end in here. All I'm saying is go in and warm up your aim with a few drills in order to get ready for ranked. This can simply be 10 minutes and it is a great way to kick off a solid rank grind session. If you want a very simple warm up routine, just use the guns you're planning on running that day and practice recoil and spray some targets down. It's a good way to remind your body for muscle memory and get you into the zone. If you want a more advanced warm up and the one that I personally use before my rank grinds or tournaments, it is a bit longer but I love it. Starting off I open up aim labs, if you're on PC it's free and a great aim trainer. I run grid shot for 10 minutes and sometimes I'll do tracking for another 10 if I have the time. Then I'll go into apex and hop into the firing range. I do 301 and flatline recoil as well as some shotgun slide flicks and bubble fight practice. This can be anywhere from 8 to 15 minutes depending on how good I feel. Then I move on to wingman flicks. I stand in the middle of the platform facing the target dummy. I then headshot him to kick things off. Then flicking from either side of him onto the targets, I hit their head and go from one side to another. Once all six are down, I flick back to the dummy and finish the kill. I do this multiple times and that's the end of my warm up. If you aren't looking to invest that much time, which I don't expect many of you, if any will. But what I do recommend is trying out some of these exercises and see what works for you and build your own routine based off that. If you do find out some, let me know what they are, I'm always looking to build out my own and I'd love to hear some examples of other people's warmups. But that's going to be it for today, I hope you all enjoyed and learned something. Apex is booming right now and I know a lot of people are looking to show off to their friends and be the carry on the squad. If you are the one that's looking to do that, you should definitely check out some of the other tips and tricks videos on our channel. We post daily highly educational content that is aimed at making you the best Apex player you can be. And again, if you want to get these videos as soon as they drop, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to be notified when they do go live. Thank you all for watching and liking the video and I'll see you in the next one.